everyone and welcome to the Military Update channel. One of these fighting vehicles could finally replace the Army's M2 Bradley. One of these days, the U.S. Army really will replace its M2 Bradley fighting vehicle. Could the umpteenth time be the charm? After multiple failed attempts, the latest competition to replace the Cold War-era Bradley Infantry fighting vehicle has drawn five contestants. The optionally manned fighting vehicle, ONFV, competition includes all of the big names in U.S. land power, plus companies from Germany and South Korea. The Army will ultimately buy thousands of the new vehicles, which are designed to carry an infantry squad into combat. The M2 Bradley entered service in the 1980s as the first American infantry fighting vehicle, IFV, a new concept pioneered by the Soviet Union. Unlike previous infantry carriers, which dismounted their soldiers before battle, the Soviets designed their BMP-1 to carry an infantry squad throughout a battle, maintaining a unit's battlefield momentum. IFVs were equipped with a small-caliber autocannon, anti-tank missiles, and heavier armor than their predecessors. The Bradley served on throughout the Cold War and beyond, first seeing combat in the 1991 Gulf War and then the 2003 invasion of Iraq. The Army has steadily upgraded the Bradley over the past five decades, but the service never intended the IFE to last as long as it has. The Army has tried to replace the Bradley at least five times since the early 2000s spending nearly $20 billion without producing a single working vehicle. The latest effort to replace the Bradley collapsed in 2020 when the ONFV competition attracted only one qualified entrant. But now, the contest suddenly has five entrants, BAE, General Dynamics Land Systems, Raytheon slash Rheinmetall, Hanwa slash Oshkosh, and a new company from Michigan called Metal Ops. The OFV will be capable of robotic operation. Most, if not all, of the entrants will include artificial intelligence, anti-tank missiles, flying drones, and an active protection system, capable of shooting down incoming rockets and missiles. The Army also wants a beefier gun than the Bradley's M242 25mm autocannon to engage more heavily armored targets at longer ranges. Here's what we know about the four major contestants, excluding Metal Ops. The TF-41 Lynx is a partnership between the US-based Raytheon and the German defense contractor Rheinmetall. The Lynx has a crew of three and can carry eight soldiers in the back. That's one more than the M2 Bradley. In February, Rheinmetall and Allison announced a partnership to equip Lynx with what the two companies call a next-generation electrified transmission. Raytheon will reportedly add its Coyote airborne drone to the vehicle, giving the TF-41 eyes over the battlefield. The Lynx is armed with a Lance 2.0 turret that includes a 35mm cannon and mission pods capable of carrying anti-tank guided missiles, drones, or loitering munitions. The vehicle is equipped with a modular armor system that weighs between 37 and 55 tons, according to Breaking Defense. This system would allow the Army to deploy lynxes with less armor to places where local bridges couldn't support the weight of a 55-ton vehicle. Out a shadowed image of its entrant on social media, which armored vehicle watchers naturally adjusted to bring out more details. The vehicle appears to be the company's armored multi-purpose vehicle. AMPV, which is designed for the U.S. Army as a personnel carrier, mortar carrier, headquarters, and medevac vehicle. The AMPV is actually derived in large part from the M2 Bradley, leading some to call it Bradley Next Generation. The turret appears to be an Elbit UP-30 MKI unmanned turret, which makes sense, as BAE and Elbit announced they would work together on an OFE last year. The turret is armed with the ATK MK 44 30mm gun, which is the same autocannon used on the M1296 Striker Dragoon Infantry Combat Vehicle, the Zumwalt class destroyers, and the AC 130W Spooky Airborne Gunships. The turret also features a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun, 